lovely friends and a very warm welcome to another mixed media tutorial with me, Lisa Taggart. And I hope you're enjoying the extravaganza so far and the lovely new stamps. This one's called Blossom Bridge and it uses the delightful Sacred Bridge from the new release and it's really glorious. So if you want to know how this was created, let's first of all look at the materials. We're using hot press watercolour card, which is nice and flat for stamping. We're using the Van Gogh pencil set. Mine are well loved, as you can see. Also using the Element Sync pads, we've got Della Blue and Lime Punch, along with Bermuda and Olive as well. We're also um, using Versafine Claire in Pinecone and Shady Lane, Kitsch Flamingo in Distress Ink and the lovely Zig Clean Colour Markers, a couple of browns, a pale olive green, a yellow and a dark blue grey. But use what you have. Also using a, a Posca pen in pale pink, a yellow and white gel pens, but all Poscas would be fine. I've got a pencil and a black fine liner, an applicator for the pastels, and also uh, the small, medium and large in the stencil brushes, along with a brush from the large brush set from Lavinia as well. Of course, some stickles, we've got lime green this time. Now moving on to the lovely stamps, we've got Sacred Bridge, we've got Swan, uh, Dragon's Thorn, Thimbleweed, Dana, who's so cute. Uh, we've also got some older stamps, Bull Rushes, uh, Lily Pad, and also Cherry Tree and Cherry Blossom. A lovely assortment this week, and if you would like to convert all of those into something that looks a little like this, with the ferry under the bridge and the swans, just keep on watching. Now we're starting off with 7 by 5.5 inches watercolour card and I've drawn out this shape. You can take a screenshot if you'd like to copy it. 4 inches down the right and 3 down the left up to the highest points in each side. And uh, we're going to uh, use our brush and our stencil brushes and our ink pads in a slightly different way this week. I've taken out quite a few here and as you can see I didn't use all of them in the end up. Um, but starting with Della Blue which is one of my favourites I must say. And we're taking um, a medium sized stencil brush and I'm just lightly with small circular motions adding some colour onto the page in, in little, little sort of dappled blue and I'm thinking of um, a cloudy sky and you don't have to be too particular just um, put down little dots of colour here and there because what we're going to do now is we're going to dampen our uh, paintbrush and keep a piece of kitchen towel to hand as well there's mine take off excess water and just lightly then um, again in circular motions uh, dab some water onto that to spread the ink across the the card and see what you have and dry that off and if you're not happy with the saturation do as I am doing and go straight onto the pad which is very naughty but add some extra depth uh, to um, parts of it until you're happy with the level of colour. Now this background that we're working on at the moment in the top uh, two thirds of the page, um, now you are just uh, the clouds you can see, just it's something like that, it doesn't have to be precise. Um, I'm also, I'll come back to the background but we're also carrying on to uh, the, the foreground and of course in any picture, the colour you have in the sky is reflected in water. And I'm just using the stencil brush to um, sweep some um, ink across the card. And I've, I've done that in an arch. Uh, I want to keep the centre of the water fairly light. And I'll be darkening down either side. Again, I'm taking my brush with a little water and I'm spreading that out um, just to make it a little smoother. And this is a kind of new way of using the elements pads by um, placing down the the um, pigment on to, on to, neat on top of the card and then just spreading it out and it works quite well. Moving on now to the 
Bermuda. And going back to the background, as I was saying, the top two thirds will be um, concentrating on doing some um, the impression of foliage and trees, nothing too precise. In the same way as we uh, did the clouds above, we're just placing down some uh, ink here and there and taking our brush and spreading that out to sort of give the impression of background trees um, and foliage. Now, I do an awful lot of fussing, as you know, and spend a lot of time doing this background. Um, it's not absolutely necessary to have it the way I have it. Um, and there I've placed some more ink and I'm, I'm making it a bit deeper. Um, and the reason, of course, for that is that the bridge will, um, you know, cover up some of it. But there are po parts of this background that we're doing now that are very important to the overall composition. And that is the, the little part that I'm doing now, that little bit of water and that little uh, portion of foliage just above um, the center there you will see that peeking through the bridge so it's important I suppose to um, spend some time building up this little background even though parts of it will be covered up later on it is an important part of the composition as you can see I'm using lime punch now just to add some dappled sunlight perhaps to the foliage and the trees in the background and again I'm taking my brush and I'm blending that out. I don't want the brush to be too saturated with water, that's why I'm using the kitchen towel, taking some of the water off and just spreading that about almost with, it's not a dry brush, but it's um, just damp until it looks something like that. Now finally, we're using a third color I decided, and this is a lovely deep color. And of course, um, when you're doing uh, foliage, you'll need a range of tones from dark to light. Uh, so you can do this in no particular order, I suppose, so long as it's blended nicely. And in the end up, you have dark patches, medium toned patches, and then the light uh, ones, as, as you can see there with the lime punch. Taking my brush again and spreading, spreading it out, um, dabbing it on, and foliage is lovely to do because it really is just little dabs of colour and, you know, little um, spread out bits and little bushy bits. And as I say, don't fuss too much like I'm doing, of course, um, ignore me <laughs> and um, make sure the part where the water meets the foliage is the bit you concentrate on. So dry off, of course. Um, and then we're moving on to the water, which is quite important. We're wanting wanting to deepen up the parts of the bank that are, are meeting the water, just like that, using the Bermuda and the very fine stencil brush. And I suppose I'm using this like a paintbrush at the moment. Um, but this is, again, like um, the top half. We're using the stencil brushes to apply the pigment to the card. And then later on, you'll see that we'll go back to the brush again and spread it out. Now, uh, where the dark colour meets the land, we're, we're doing it in um, horizontal lines. And when we're adding f foliage to the water, we'll be doing it in vertical lines. Um, so we're start there you are, we're starting to add some uh, shadows perhaps making it up as I'm going along um, I will define the shadows better uh, when we've done the stamping but I know that I want light in the center and I'd like the either side of the water to be darker in tone so what I'm doing now is making sure like the top half adding different color greens to the water to reflect what's in the land so we, we're back to our lime punch, adding some paler, lighter, um, punchier areas, I suppose, in terms of green. Uh, so it's a lovely colour. And um, just um, randomly at the moment, um, mixing it. Uh, um, this little bit's important because it'll peak underneath the, the bridge. Uh, so adding um, the impression of shadows, just little lines and... Uh, just applying it as you can see it's quite rough 
So don't be afraid of it. Um, all you're doing is taking this wonderful little stencil brush, which is very, uh, more, uh, very much more precise, I suppose, than the uh, larger version. And it allows you to add a little bit more colour each time you use it. And I think we're on to the olive colour now. And again, just reflecting what we did before up above. And uh, you'll see the difference um, when we start to, to blend it out. That wee bit's a bit deep, but I'll sort it out later on. So there you are, now taking the brush. Now this time I want the brush to be just damp and very little water because what I'm doing is I'm sweeping it downwards and I'm just um, taking the pigment that hits the brush and moving it downwards so uh, it looks like, um, you know, foliage in the water and uh, it also lightens it a bit. And this is fun to do, just lightly blending. And as I say, I emphasize that the brush don't make it too saturated. Um, it is almost like a, a dry brushing, but as I say, slightly damp is best. And you can see the brush is um, starting to spread out a bit there because it is so dry. But just keep going with it. It will blend it. And if there's a bit that you're not happy with, um, you can put water to your brush again and add that to uh, the, the painting and um, allow the brush there to dab it off so if you put more water on it spreads it out and makes it lighter if you follow so that's that part done um, more or less and I thought I may as well, well colour in the bank here um, I'm trying to work out as well where the light source is coming from in this in this little painting. I think it's probably from the right hand side across so I kept that bank light. And uh, going back then to the blue I thought I'd add uh, some more of that lovely, I love the tone of this Stella blue. It is a very beautiful blue and very good for skies and water. So added that in just to deepen it up a wee bit and again using the, the damp brush to blend that out. Now next up we're using our pastel pencils and I'm going to start off uh, on the land at the top and I'm just adding uh, a few little lines here and there to indicate trees through the foliage. Now uh, again you don't have to do this because a lot of it will be covered up in the end up but I, I always think the layers are important uh, because little aspects of each layer will poke through in the end. So it's up to you, um, this bit is optional. Now, the little bit in the centre there I did with the dark blue and um, just adding the same sort of thing again. I think it's probably a wee bit more important to fill that part in, as you will see it. Uh, again, I'm thinking of reflections in that tiny little area and adding some more, it's like a navy colour, uh, reflections to the water and I also then put on some white, um, if you can see there, a cross white gel pen, um, which also just creates the water effect. Now we're moving on to the star of the show and this is such a glorious stamp and this is the Sacred Bridge and it's so beautiful and it's hard not to love this stamp. Um, and there we have it in place and don't worry that parts are peeking through we're going to take care of that shortly just taking my navy again and grinding the bridge and um, just darkening off that underneath but we'll go back to that later now I'm adding uh, the trees and I just love the idea of cherry trees and spring and um, peeking in the background and across the bridge so we're starting off with a little tree which is a very delicate little stamp and very pretty I don't want the bottom of the trunk so I've masked it off there just with copy paper and it looks as if it's um, at the side of the bridge. I want some in the background so I'm just stamping it off first and using second generation and this is the brown Versafine Claire ink pad which I think is, um, sorry I can't remember the colour 
but uh, I'm not using any black in the picture this time, just sticking to the dark browns. And I thought also then I'd, I just want the blossom part at the top, so I don't want any more trunk, so I'm just uh, adding that, and that's enough. Now, I thought also I would add just to uh, balance out the picture, the tree to the other side. You don't see it very much at this stage because I did it in second generation, but I will bring that out with uh, pastel pencils and Posca pens later. Now, this is the lovely uh, cherry tree uh, branch and I haven't used this in a while. And I thought this would look nice against the bridge. I didn't want it to cover up too much of the bridge because I wanted the bridge to really shine through um, so I've removed just that portion of it so that it really um, is placed at the top of the bridge and just along along the top of it um, so there you are it looks as if it's growing through the bridge and a few wee bits didn't uh, take so I'm taking my dark brown pastel pencil and that's it now the little fairy I stamped off camera, a second generation ink and brown, just to have her in place. And now we're going to take the Zig Clean Colour in blue, grey, peel dawn grey and beige, I think it is. And um, starting off with the, this, this grey is really like a Payne's grey. And uh, we're going to um, just graduate the colour from dark to light. And the good thing about the Zig Clean Colour markers is they blend so beautifully together. So the grey at the start looks a bit strong, but if you add this lovely um, mid-tone brown to it and blend it into it, then it um, you know, uh, takes away the depth a wee bit. And as you can see, it's a great colour for the twigs and the bridge. And this is then the medium tone. So we're working from dark to light and uh, I'm adding in also that little olive colour. I um, can't remember what their names are now, but it's optional. Um, it's just to add a little bit of dimension and also to take care of um, the foliage peeking in from behind. This one's pale yellow. Of course, we want the lightest at the top, just like that. And um, trying to blend that in where the foliage has come through uh, just to give the impression of the light hitting the top of the bridge just carrying that along the whole way now I think off camera I also add like a uh, like another brown to the medium or sorry to the middle of the bridge there you can see it now and I blended it in later because I wasn't uh, very happy with the rustiness of it but it's there for now and I think I blend it with the with the, the mid-tone brown later on. Now I'm going back to the water and I'm really just darkening up what I did before with the ink pads. And this time I'm adding more definition to the reflection. Now that I have the trees, I know what to reflect. So um, just by eye... Um, estimating what they might look like in the water. They don't need to be a perfect reflection, particularly if there's movement in the water, they'll shake about and not look exactly the same, so don't worry. Something like that and keep the darkest part towards um, where the land meets the water. And I also thought I'd put in the shape of the bridge in the water. I wasn't sure whether I wanted it reflected in the water, whether the light would mean that it was reflected. But I thought I would just add it in very lightly to see how it looks. I didn't want to stamp it in the water because I just didn't want to be left with the image, uh, even if it's a, a light pale reflection, and then not want, want it in the picture. So I'm using the pastels for the reflection and I think it worked out OK, just as a hint. Carrying on then with the uh, foliage in the water at the right hand side and I do have in my mind at this stage that I want to add some foliage uh, at the top of the picture coming down so this is what will be reflected in the water in this side until it looks something like that and I've um, added some yellow gel pen to highlight the little fairy in parts and also very importantly some of the, the, the top of the bridge I've added some yellow to that 
Now moving on to the beautiful swans and we've got pine cone. That's the colour brown I'm using in this project. And um, I'm going to stamp them out. Um, and the composition of this, I suppose, is worth a mention. I'm stamping the three creatures in the project. That's the fairy and the two swans in a triangular. Um, and this is something I do quite often so that um, the slightly larger swan that I'm stamping now is in the foreground. Then the, 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 the other swan, which is slightly smaller and facing a different direction, is next in the in the middle and then the little fairy that's smaller again uh, under the bridge and that's to help with the perspective so I'm going to dry all of this off of course and if you don't see me with my heat gun uh, please assume that I've just done that off camera because each layer must be dried when you've stamped something afterwards um, particularly if we're going to colour with pastels on top so if I forget to say that, please do dry everything very thoroughly before we move on to the next stages. So added the lily pads and now I'm taking the lovely new foliage stamp. Um, and I think that's Dragon's Thorn, which is a great name. I'm not using the full length of it because I don't want to obliterate the bridge, but I do want uh, the tail of it to, to show through because it is very beautifully drawn. Now there is a smaller um, dragon's thorn in the set. You could use that as well. Um, but I wanted the um, stamping to be quite loose at the top here. So there you are. That's that. And I've done that in the green uh, Versafine Claire pad. Now I'm taking this other little stamp which is called Thimble Weed and again it has a bigger, uh, more open version in the set but I'm choosing to use the smaller one just to add in some um, darker areas to the hanging foliage and off camera I add some more in brown as well just to deepen it up a little bit but most of this is just in the green colour. So it's all dried off, the brown is added and I want to add some pink to the left hand side because this is where all the cherry blossoms are. And so I thought um, that would be a nice way of um, enhancing the cherry blossom tree. I'm taking off some of the ink on my stencil brush and this is the large stencil, stencil brush that I'm using. But I, I want to keep it re reasonably pale, I don't want to go too deep with it. I think um, about that level of saturation is enough and I'm also then adding some pink with a pastel pencil in the water. Um, it's a, a nice touch but uh, it is very subtle and I don't think you see it very much in the end up. Now that the swans are dry and they need to be perfectly dry before we use our pastel pencils on top, I'm taking this uh, flesh colour or it's almost like a very pale salmon colour um, but uh, use a pale pink or um, a white or a grey but this is just uh, to give a, a shadow colour to, to the white and as you can see where the dark areas of the swan might be I'm using this colour and then I'm taking my white, which really should be sharpened. Apologise, I don't know why it's such a bad state <laughs> that I try to draw with these um, unsharpened pencils. Um, is a mystery to me, <laughs> but uh, there you go. Um, I think it's because I don't have a very good sharpener. Uh, but I'm trying to whiten the top of the swan up. And I'll take this in, in uh, layers and um, try to build it up. And uh, you'll see that I do manage to get it lighter and I'm just uh, eyeballing the, the again the uh, reflection and just uh, just thinking what it might look like. I'm not too concerned. It's just an indication of a reflection and uh, putting that in the water. And as long as uh, you have a a deep line in between it will look like a reflection I think I've added that off camera I've just used a, a black pa pastel pencil to delineate the line between the water and the reflection and this bit is fun because when you add the orange pop then it looks like a, a swan all of a sudden 
and again reflect that in the water. And to get the lovely white, I'm using this um, very badly behaved gel pen. Now it's it's um, an old gel pen and really should have used a newer one for this. Um, so it was a bit temperamental, but uh, I um, battled away with it anyway. And it's very important then to have these very bright highlights, I think, and then blend them in again with the pastels. So I'm using the pen, the very naughty gel pen on top. And uh, in the end up, it looked like feathers the way it was coming out. So I was happy enough with it, even though it wasn't spreading as I'd hoped. Um, I would recommend if you're using a Posca pen or a, a gel pen, maybe to use a fresh one if you're doing this and i um, a bit nervous about wrecking the whole thing. Then the lines um, also in the water make it come together and blending out those rough edges with back to that fleshy colour. Um, but a grey would also work as well. And there I've done the both of them, uh, finished both of them in exactly the same way with using the same techniques uh, and now I'm adding some colour to the lily pads now you can use your pastel pencils for this and as you can see I've got a lime colour a dark navy black and a, a pink but you could equally use your Posca pens if you if you don't have pastel pencils you could uh, use them as well and I always add this um, minty colour into water and lily pads because it kind of lifts um, lifts them I think but if you don't have that colour it doesn't matter and if you maybe have it in the Posca pen you could add that in at this stage um, and just giving the impression of colour pink colour to the lovely lilies and of course this will the idea of these is that they'll complement the cherry blossoms on the other side and uh, putting some reflection uh, in white with this pen that is refusing to work but um, a wee hint here and there is is all you need, just like that. And then the lines for the water to indicate um, movement, but also when the lines are horizontal across, um, it brings the water into play um, and somehow brings it to life. And I know we've done this before. And it's a fun part if your pen works. <laughs> now, uh, Posca pen again. This time it's the beautiful pale pink. And it's basically colouring in from here on in. And uh, it just uh, pops the lovely blossoms out. And uh, this is very therapeutic. I always find this part just adding the little dots and um, basically um, bringing the little flowers to life. So they look something like that. Also um, adding some light to the little um, lily pads and, and flowers. Just a little bit, just a hint. And then bringing this little cherry tree to life that's been forgotten, poor little tree in the background by adding dots. And I've added all the dots to the top of the fine blossom as well. And finally, it wouldn't be um, complete without a little sparkle. And I'm just stabbing this lovely lime green colour down the foliage for some twinkle. And uh, I think also add it a few more places um, to the, uh, just a little dab here and there. And of course to the fairy's wings. So the little fairy is brought into the picture and brought to life and also to the top of the beautiful bridge. And that inside part of the bridge, I forgot to say, is more lit up by the little lantern. So I put some yellow gel pen in there and some twinkle just to light that inside part up. Add some little green leaves to the cherry blossom and a few little lines in the water. And that's us. So there you are. Oh, and I think I've one more thing to do. Um, I'm taking my Shady Lane Green in the Versafine Claire and I'm stamping the bull rushes just in the foreground just to draw your eye in more to the picture. I darken those up and I also then add a hint of sparkle to those as well. And that really is us finished now. So I hope you uh, like it. 
Just prior to doing this picture, I was on a, a beautiful walk in a place I go locally to walk the dogs and it has a lake and it happened to have a beautiful swan on the lake. So I must say I was feeling very inspired before I started my project. So thank you so much for joining me today and I do hope that it's inspired you to uh, create something of your own and um, even use some of the techniques to create a different picture. And of course, until next time, take very good care of yourselves. And above all, don't be afraid of it. Get creating, be brave and enjoy the adventure.